Good evening, everybody. All right, today was an unfun day. Um, Yeah, on fun day. Uh, so the question is, how do you prevent a day like today? The answer is you can't. What you want to know is what do you do after a day like today? So obviously uh, today's trading took a lot of profits back, but here's what uh, here's one observation, which is we can see in the Nasdaq. About every four weeks, they take a big down day, bring it back up. Big down day, take it back up. Big down day, uh, take it back up. Big down day. So the Japanese rice traders say, what, let the market tell you what the market is doing. Now we have to see whether on a big selling day, whether they start bringing it back up. Unfortunately, what that does is if you're in the final week of option trading, kind of wipes out a lot of the profits of any uh, options. But once again, that comes back to how do you how do you account for this, or how do you to uh, how do you react to it? So as we've seen in the past, after a big down day, we started seeing buy signals, buy signals, buy signals. So we just have to see whether they start selling us off. If they're selling us off, where do you think the first target will be? Probably back to the 50, or they're in this trend channel right now. We see an indecisive trading day. So that doesn't really give us any guidelines of where it's going to go. It just gives us a guideline of what should we, what should we do once we see where it's going. So at this point, a lot of the uh, positions were should have been sold out. I say a lot of positions. A lot of positions were sold out because they closed back below the T line. If the uh, if this uh, confirms again tomorrow, you probably want to be adding a few shorts. But remember, the T line is your your basis for seeing a signal and a close below the T line. Just very simple. Anything that does that usually is going to create uh, uh, more probabilities to the downside and the upside. All right, so let's get through some of the commodities real quick. Just uh, we see the uh, how the uh, crude oil prices have not bounced back up yet. They're still in this downtrend. Gold, gold is trying to get back up through the 50. It's right there, but notice also right here at the 50, we're running out of steam in our, st our stochastics, like we saw up here. So. If they fail the 50 again, that means you want to be short gold because they're probably going to come back down to the bottom of the trend channel. Let's make this a little bit more pronounced. So at least we uh, can estimate what we should be doing. If they break this out, obviously it's a breakout of the 50. But as I say, we're running out of steam on our stochastic silver. This is more compelling that they're going to go up through the through the uh, the 50, but once again, once it gets through stochastics in the overbought area, we better see convincing buying telling us that they're breaking out versus popping up and then heading right back down again. Uh, the dollar went short. The dollar the other or uh, yesterday because um, it was selling off and closed back below the T line. So right now, even though it's trading up a little bit, it's still below the T-line rolling over. I would suspect at least coming back down to this type of, oh, that was fine, uh, this, this support level right in here. And that means also the euro is acting stronger. The British pound 
and not doing much of anything. British pound is in a sideways mode. And the Japanese yen had seen some buy signals. Oh, there it is. Buy signal, bullish engulfing. Now it's popped up nicely. What number is key on stochastic? I use 12.33 just because that seems to work for me. Um, All right, what else we got here? Uh, gold, silver, oh. Keeping an eye on lean hogs, because that seems to be having a hard time getting up through this uh, downtrending channel. Did a bearish engulfing signal today. After hours, it's trading up, or uh, maybe it is, you no. Know, uh, trading up a little bit after uh, hours, but this one I'm getting ready to short if it comes back down through today's low. Um, okay, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Gold, silver, dollar, interest rates, interest bond prices coming back up, trying to get through the 50. Also, that would be breaking this down trending channel. That would tell us uh, bond prices going up, uh, interest rates going lower. Soybeans, this has done kind of a cradle pattern. And notice what it did yesterday. What is today? It did Friday. Big move to the upside, inverted hammer, moved positive again today. So you get an inverted hammer, big bullish uh, trade or confirmation, plus a cradle type pattern. That pretty pretty well indicates that you're probably in an uptrend. At this point, after hours, it's trading down a little bit. But if it traded back up through today's high, I'm sorry, today's close, probably want to be bar, uh, buying this one. And let's see what the other grains. I think uh, wheat was still kind of lethargic, heading to the downside. Uh, it's probably gotten to a level where you don't want to be long. Just yet, but you don't want to be short. You want to be ready to cover the short positions. And corn. Whoops. Corn had a bullish signal. Also confirmed by staying up above the T-line. Let's make this a little bit bigger where we can. I'm sorry, staying up above the uh, uh the 50, after a big bullish engulfing signal, breaking this down trending channel, another one that you'd probably want to start buying on positive trading. I don't think there was anything else in any of the others. Sugar uh, trying to base, but nothing yet. Coffee, sideways, nothing. It's still in a slow uptrend, but nothing to trade at this point. Cocoa, same scenario, just moving sideways, nothing to work off. Um, and let's see, natural gas. Natural gas, that's a good signal. That's a, uh, a gap up from a uh, bullish harami right on the 50, gapped up through the T-line. This one you can be buying. There's your wave one, wave two, starting wave three. Now, it also traded off the 50. After a strong price move, this is where, just for Funsies, I throw the uh, Fibonacci numbers on, and it looks like the 50% retracement level, exactly the same place where the 50-day moving average is, acts as support. So that's just that much more credibility that this was an area where uh, the buyers are stepping in. Uh, JR, yours seems to have that problem quite a bit. Log off and log back in again and see if that helps you out any. Okay, let's see. I guess that's, uh, if I've forgotten anything, dollar, I guess not. All right. Um, one of the things, one of the hardest things to do, I say one of the hardest things, it was always hard for me, is buying a position and then deciding whether to stay in it if it goes negative on you the next, or during that same day. Now, here was a case where a clever purchase is if it opens positive and trades positive, even though you're not in the overbought area, it should be doing exactly what the uh, pattern tells us it should be doing. 
which means trading positive. It shouldn't be coming back in this direction. So that would be a perfect place to put a sell stop. But if you bought it and it started moving up on the open, just put the sell stop right here because it shouldn't come back down in this direction. However, if you happen to be away from the desk like I was, as long as it didn't close back below the halfway point of this candle, number one, and number two, the look of the little 3T line is stay up above that. So it gives me another opportunity, which is it better open positive and trade positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, where can I at least expect it going to? Probably back down to test the T line. Is it going to stay there or go through there? I have no idea. So if it opens lower, I'm probably going to close out the position. If it opens flat, and I say it opens lower and starts trading down, if it opens and the market is flat, not really moving anywhere, and this opens, trades down a little bit, I may give it three, five, seven, ten minutes and see whether they start buying or whether they're continuing selling it. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, we did crude oil. Crude oil still not showing any great strength. It still can be shorted if it opens lower tomorrow. Um, all right, so yeah, see if somebody can help uh, JR. All right, so, oh, that was OXTB. The reason that even if you owned it here, you get it a little bit extra, uh, let's say, leeway is because notice the pattern, a fry pan bottom bouncing off the 50 with a doji gap up, left right there, a bullish confirmation. Um, that uh, still gives you the opportunity that, to be in this pattern. So it's just very simple trading technique. It better open positive and trade positive tomorrow. Okay, and uh, what else do we have? Oh. DGI did a bearish harami after opening and trading positive. We recommended this one as a uh, option trade if it broke out to the upside today. Uh, either two two type of trades, either do a credit spread uh, or buy the February calls because we did definitely have a, a J-hook pattern set up. Now that it closed as a bearish harami, that kind of eliminates any option trading, but your stock trade or your next option trading uh, uh, perspective should be we shouldn't do anything unless it comes back up through this level. Now, that doesn't keep us from seeing a, a J-hook pattern set up where they bring it back one day and the next day they take it right back up again. Um, uh, Sam, let's say, I don't know whether it was, I have to take a look at it. XBT, a buy? Uh, yes. Because if it opens positive and trades positive, that tells us this fry pan bottom breakout is still in progress. And then again, you just use, if it opens positive and trades positive, you can buy it. Then you just use today's open or close as your stop because if it opened positive and traded positive, it shouldn't come back down through this level. If it does, they're still bringing it down. Um, okay, let's see what else we had. Oh, ZLTQ. This is why you want to know where you are as far as the trend. This one gapped up nicely. Didn't see any reason for it to, but it gapped up nicely. But then started drifting off. And how far do you want it to drift off? Well, that's where you flip to your 10-minute chart because you're, you've had a gap up in the overbought condition. It shouldn't come back down, at least through the uh, T-line. When it did, we closed out the position. Because if it's be trading below the T-line, what's that telling us? It's in a downtrend. Now, it could have turned right around and headed back up. We could always bought back in. But with a gap up, and then you can start seeing the selling, close out the position. We had good profits in it. We had better profits up here, obviously. But there was no inkling until the uh, signal. So this still comes back to the uh, no inkling that they were going to sell it off. 
until they got back below the T-line. So this still brings us right back to one simple uh, 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 parameter that uh, we, we can't always buy at the absolute bottom. We can't always sell at the absolute top. What we're looking for is this fat part in between. In this case, it wasn't very big, but there's a lot of times where you can buy here and sell here. You didn't get the the very top price, but you got most of the price. I'd rather be making less money on many more positive trades than more money on a fewer uh, fewer trades. Uh, they gapped up because they announced good earnings, and then so apparently they weren't as good as everybody liked it after they thought about it. Um, Okay, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, BWEN was another one that yesterday did this big bearish signal. Uh, it looked more like a bearish harami on the other service. So we needed it for to do something that tells us that the bulls were still in control. In this case, open positive and trade positive. When they gapped it down... And then even started trading below the low of that day. It was time to close this one out. Will it turn around? That we don't know. But if it does, you can always buy back in. Uh, ALK was another uh, trade that was just about ready to break out. This is why we had the advantage of seeing what's happening right at these levels. Much more graphically that they failed here instead of going through. Now, is this pattern out of the uh, picture? Definitely not. They haven't closed it below the T-line, but first day or first inkling is they failed right now. What makes this a buy? They opened up positive and came back up through this level again. That tells us the bulls are still in control and this pattern is still uh, in process. And let's see. Let's see. Oh, that's there was something. DGI did this. D-W-E-N did this. All right. Oh, that's that's why. Okay, D-G-I. This is why uh, I knew there was a rationale to this. That uh, if this failed up here, you closed out the position. You can always buy it back because we weren't buying it for from here to here or from here to here. We were buying it on the basis that if it broke out through here, we'd have another 10-point run to it. This right now is telling us that we don't want to be in it just yet. Um, and that was uh, somewhat the same situation when we saw a sell right here at the same level, kind of close right back at that level. It better open positive and trade positive or we want to be out of the trade. Now, why would we keep Omar when it – no, it didn't. I thought Omar had closed down. But Omar is still – in the hunt here because we didn't sell off, number one. Number two, stochastics are heading up. Number three, it didn't sell off even in a bad market. So that means our pattern is still working. Whoops, I, I'm sorry. I do do that. Uh, um, Dennis will do individual stocks uh, after we do the double line. Um so this still is a good buy setup because if they open a positive, what do we got? We've got a doji with a positive open, which means they're moving it higher, which means they're breaking out through this level, which means we're in a wave three of our J-hook pattern. Um, VISN was another one that had the opportunity of breaking out. It pulled back immediately. So this is another case where... When you're buying, people say, well, we buy on the open. Yes, but that open could be after 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes. So what we don't want to see is when it opens, it immediately starts trading off. Um, we can always buy somewhere down here once we see the buy signals set in. It may have, even if it uh knocked us back out, or even if we held on to it at this point, we were in down here versus being in up here. And this chart, even though it doesn't look good 
still didn't close below the T-line. So that with stochastics not quite in the oversold area, except the stochastics did turn up when it hit this level. Remember, it broke up above the T-line. Stochastics turned up not quite in the oversold area. If this opens positive and starts trading positive, you definitely want to be a buyer. Okay, let's see. NC. NC was another example of why we want to take a, pay attention to the signals. This had a nice fry pan bottom or slow curve breakout. Did very well on some options, but closed out the options today because look where we are in the overbought condition with a bearish harami. Uh, closed out the uh, January uh, calls. If this still moves higher tomorrow, now we can move to the uh, Februarys and or if you're buying the stock, you can still be buying the stock on this breakout. You, probably with the type of magnitude move of this, means you've probably got another two or three points on this one. Um, my solution is to create a maximum price on a buy stop order. All right. Okay, Gale, another one. And again, this is kind of illustrating why we like to buy the patterns. Because as we can see in this pattern, they gapped it up today. Still had a nice strong day in this one in a weak market. We got wave one, wave two, wave three. However, we're in wave three, which is approximately the same length as this one right here. With a gap up, I'm definitely going to be watching for a sell signal tomorrow or the potential of one to start taking profits. We'll definitely close out the position if it closes or trades back below this level. Because why? Because this was our alert, a gap up in the overbought condition. Um, uh, Wayne, no, not safer to do do anything in the first half hour of trading. Remember, we're doing a whole different technique. There's an old adage out there that the amateurs buy in the first hour, the, the professionals trade the rest of the day. The problem with that is I don't care whether amateurs are buying or professionals are buying. If it's confirming the signal, I want to be a buyer. I don't care who's buying. Um, so, was, uh, so I want to be buying in that first half hour because that's wherever the buyers or the sellers are probably doing most of their activity. I want to be in there before that activity uh, moves, hopefully in confirming the uh, the signal that we saw the day before. CADX is another one where it's coming out of this fry pan bottom. Oh, no. Same time, same place. Man, oh, man, I don't even have a joke to fill in the, for the time here. Is there any way to tell which rounding bottom will have a better breakout? Uh, no. Just uh, you go with the uh, probabilities. Um, uh, yeah, tur turkey cam. Well, Shazam. Let's take the gander back. They come up if we've already brought them up. Um, was it this breakout? Uh, when it came back, uh, it told us that they weren't breaking out. When it came out through again this time, told us this time they were breaking out. So now, can you tell if the magnitude of this breakout is going to be huge or this one? Not necessarily. You just know that it's, it's probably breaking out and you're going to be in the right direction. So if this one fails, depending on how you're buying it, you don't close it unless you see a close back below the T-line. And once we got back to the T-line, what do we have? A bullish rummy. I don't know why we're making this so small. We can make this bigger. I can't remember where we were. Oh, right here. So once this told us that they weren't going to go back below the T-line, it told us we had probably another little uh, hook starting up. Um uh, the normal market hours, yes, Maria. Pre-market doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot. Probably 99% of the time, 
free market trading is usually done with very little volume because there's no big volume sitting there. Um, what we and we don't care about what the little trading does pre market or post market. What we're interested in is everybody that's coming to the market during market hours. What are their what is their decision? Now, free market does tell us what investor sentiment is doing uh, prior to market. So if you see a buy signal, so if you see a buy signal and you can see that they're trading it up the next day, you know that there's not anything that has occurred that's uh, altering that uh, investor sentiment. What time frame on Gale will you use to look for a sell signal? Still a daily, but if Gale shot up huge tomorrow, then I'd flip over to my 10-minute chart and see, make sure it stays above the T-line. Uh, yes. All of those could be profit taking in an uptrend. But this one is giving us a, a, a sell signal. So it was just a, a function of oh, VISN, for example. Didn't close back below the T-line. So that's one parameter. It's not quite a sell signal, and it's pretty close to the halfway point. But the fact that it's still above the T-line still gives me my decision-making process for the next day. It needs to open and trade positive because that's what the last signal told us it should be doing. If it opens lower and starts trading below the T-line, it's kind of negated this signal because it's now trading well below the halfway point. It could go down and come right back up, or it could go straight on down. Why take the risk? Worst case scenario, if it opens lower and starts trading down and then turns around and comes back up, you buy it as soon as it comes back up through the T-line again. Why? Because we've already had a buy signal, we've had consolidation, and it looks like the bulls are still there. Um, once the stock is well above the T-line, what do you use as your sell stop? Usually the uh, previous day is open. Intraday. So if this opened positive, I'd still have a sell stop right here intraday because intraday, if it came down through there, that's a lot of selling pressure that far away from the T-line. That's a good place to be out of it. Uh, yes, that's a very good way to, to enter a trade also. Um, where I'll find some. It kind of PGNX. All you can do here is stay long. And the reason for it is we're still in this J hook pattern. So at this point, again, with stochastics in the overbought area, this trading up positive, I just use this area as my stop. Now, if it gapped up and started trading up, I'd put a sell stop at where it uh, opened because it gapped up in the overbought condition. If it came back down through, I want to uh, – oh, the five line. Is that the T line on the five minutes? Okay. Um, okay, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, Kendai. Oh, mercy me. O, B, N, D. Okay, that one's coming up. Now, A, B, M, D also has the obvious right now that it closed back below the previous day's open. This one... Should have been closed out, not because the uptrend's over and it hasn't done a sell signal. Is that the probabilities are this going to come back down and test the T line? Worst case scenario, if they open this positive, and start trading positive, you can you can buy it back. But the fact that they kind of got up in the overbought condition, here's a fry pan bottom with a breakout. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go straight up. At this point, I want to see if it's going to support at the uh, T line. On the other hand, if it does come up and it comes back through this level. 
can let's make this bigger. That tells me the bulls are still there, but this fry pan is still working. Are there times where I get into a position, get out, give some back some, uh, or give up some profit opportunity? Sure do, but I'd rather give up profit opportunity than give up profits or take a loss. Because every time I give up profits or take a loss, I have to have another trade that makes that up. Whereas if I just give up a little bit of my uh, uh, profit potential, I'm still making money in the positive direction. Making money in a positive direction. Is that a redundant redundancy? Um, okay. Yeah, the yeah the T line was supposed to have been the the five line was the T line. Okay. What one were we looking at? Oh, it was Kendai. Kendai just stayed above the T line. Makes this very simple. It has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. Now, we can see pre-market what the uh, the futures are going to do. Market down, the Dow down 180 points today. If it's continuing, we're going to see uh, obviously weaker uh, futures in the morning. On the other hand, if this was just a pullback sell-off day, more than likely you're going to see the pre-market futures up and uh, people stepping right back in again. Um, and let's see, uh, AMRS, what did I just do? Well, what the heck is this? Ha! AMRS. This one's still a good-looking chart because this is, again, just a very simple visual study of human nature. Moves up, moves up, profit-taking. When the profit-taking's over, we can see it with a bullish engulfing. And they've stayed above the T-line. This makes it very simple also for tomorrow. If this opens positive tomorrow, what's our simple rule of a doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. That tells me this J-hook pattern is still in progress. Now, the nice thing about a J-hook pattern is if this is wave one, not only is the magnitude of that wave one uh, identifiable, but the speed that it got there is identifiable. Oh, we were doing CADX. Okay, that's right. Yep, so there's that fry pan bottom. Notice how they opened this lower yesterday and then brought it right back up again. That told us the bulls were still there even after some profit taking. Wave one, wave two, we're definitely in wave three. And... Uh, Oops, I don't know what I just did there. MU, another case where it's had the opportunity to sell off after a big uh, price move the other day. But they still haven't been able to take it back down. Um, and it's still trading above the 3T line. The 3T line is just a very simple indicator that if it's above the 3T line. They haven't done anything to really bring it back to the T line yet. So what do I want to see here tomorrow? I'd still want to see this open positive and trade positive. If they open it lower, where's the next target? Back to the T line. Are they going to support there? have no idea. Um, can I still buy CADX? I would say no, because if we know this is our magnitude, where would that come from? Magnitude of our move, and we're already up into this part of that move, there's better risk-reward. First of all, the market today isn't telling us we want to be excessively long. So this is why you want to be buying down here, because your risk-reward is much greater. Now, there's still other positions that you might want to buy that looks like this. For example, I'd rather be buying MRTX 
on positive trading because it's just now breaking out. That means if this is wave one, wave three has got the potential of another 10 points to the upside, and it's just starting. Yes, MRTX. So just because you see something that is moving well doesn't necessarily mean you need to jump into it. When you see something moving well, what you should be going back to and say, all right, what did, was it that created the opportunity to be getting into this one at a lower level? So just recognize the pattern. And that's that's what I did to, to go through years of figuring out when to be in or when to be out of a trade was – what kept telling me it was time to buy? What kept telling me it was time to sell? <clears throat> There's a J-hook pattern in progress. In progress, meaning if it comes back up through today's open, coming up through this level, we can obviously see we've got a J-hook pattern uh, uh, working. So is that going to happen? I have no idea. I just know that if it does happen, I've got a good uh, positive trade where it's, going to move another three and a half points, probably taking us up to test the recent highs. And uh, let's see. Let's kind of crank through some of these. CCRN should have been closed out today because it closed below the T-lines. Remember, we had a doji that told us they're going to move it in the direction of how they open it. This one should have been closed out for two reasons. One, to close below the T-line. Two, the trajectory is now rolling over a little bit. Uh, IDRA. This is what we call the classic. Fry pan bottom. What, we, what result do we expect out of a fry pan bottom? Very strong price move. What do we expect after a strong price move, profit taking, and then possibly what type of pattern, a J-hook pattern? This one, you can definitely be buying on positive trading tomorrow, and very simply, you're going to use the T-line as your stop. Now, is that move from here to here a significant percentage? Maybe move from here, here to here, maybe. That might be a 6, 8, uh, maybe not much, but let's say a 4, 5, 6 percent uh, uh, a loss. Yeah, that's true. But remember, we're calculating that the probabilities are that if it opens positive, it's going in this direction. And then the low po probability is that if it turned around and closed back below the T-line, this trade didn't work. So, and uh, that comes back to the, uh, a lot of people say, uh, or say, oh, my, uh, my investment advisor said you all should put your stop loss at 3, 5, 7, 8% below where you paid for it. The fallacy with that is the market doesn't give a hoot where you bought. What's going to move the price is what it does on the charts. Um, so all we have to do is analyze where does the chart tell us that this is not in an uptrend anymore. Uh, DDD was an example of something starting to roll over. We had a bearish engulfing. Still didn't confirm. We had an evening star signal. Still didn't confirm, but now the close below the T-line, that confirmed. Now, it could just pull back like it did here and start back up, but that means we don't want to be in it because we don't know whether it's going to pull back to here, 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 or here. Why well, take the risk? Close out the position and buy it back if it does another buy signal. Uh, but if I... Okay, let's see. All right. Uh, all right. Um, the Valero, finally in this long uptrend, whoops, it didn't close below the T-line. However, it makes it very simple. If this does trade below the T-line, tomorrow close out the position. And I definitely want to see it close below the T-line. But even if it uh, started trading down below the T-line, same scenario. Close out the position. If it trades down and comes back up through, you can always buy it because if they come back up through the T-line, what's it telling us? They're still not closing below the T-line. And what I don't want to do is wait to see if they're going to take it down and bring it back up. In something like less than 7.3 seconds, you put a sell signal or sell order in, it executes, 
it comes all the way down here and comes back up in 7.3 seconds, you can buy it back again. The buying back is not the problem. It's our emotions that are the problem for doing what uh, what the trend is telling us. PVA, same scenario. At the same level it topped out before, it's topping out again. To stay in it, it needs to open positive and trade positive. It's still coming up off our best friend, which is a doji gap up out of a little scoop pattern. It still hasn't closed below the T-line, but it better trade positive tomorrow so it doesn't confirm uh, the sell signal. Did we do PGNX? I think so, yes, we did. And DYAX is another example of a good pattern. There's that slow curve fry pan bottom. Notice what started this off was the doji sandwich staying above the T-line, breaking out through the 50. This one, all you can do is stay long. Now, I say stay long. Notice what type of day it had today on a day when the market was getting crunched. So um, this is why on a day like today when he gave back profits, the profits given back or the uh, account wasn't devastated because there were still numerous positions in the uh, uh, portfolio. Whoop, hold on. I had to have some hot tea. <laughs> there was numerous positions in the portfolio that were still trading positive even on a bad day. So this is the comfort, uh, uh, say the comfort zone I've developed over the years, that even on a bad day when I know I've had to close out some positions that are hoping going higher, I had other positions that were still acting well in that portfolio. Um, and let's see. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong places. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. There's another slow curve, and it had a good day, even in a bad trading day market. A uh, little doji gap up through this area. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one coming off this little rounding curve. Um, oh, Shazam, what did I just do? Uh, no, Michael, I drink all the cold ones before the close. It's, uh, uh, NAVX, another one that had a nice day, a little still in an uptrend. This one you stay with. Uh, notice how this came, where this came from, this fry pan bottom breakout. And SEM, this is why you want to know your signals. Notice where this opened, right about the same place it opened the previous day after gapping up and doing a doji. So what's this set us up for? It sets us up for a very simple trade. If this opens positive, which way is it going to move after a doji? It's going to trade positive. If it trades positive, what's it telling us about the T-line? The T-line is not acting as a resistance. If it trades positive, what type of signal are we going to have? We're going to have a flutter kicker signal. And if we do a positive trade off a of flutter kicker signal, what's that tell us about this pattern, that we're in another J-hook pattern? No, that's not a belt hold. The belt hold would be a green candle. This one had a big down day, then gap back up uh, near the top of the trading range. If it goes positive, then you've got your flutter kicker signal. Oh, uh, Leo, probably somewhere around uh, 10, 12, 14, not all necessarily in the same portfolio, but might have 14 different positions uh, with a lot of them duplicated in, in different uh, uh, different, posi or different positions. Wow, I really goofed up. I can't even think what I was saying. 14 positions, most of them in most portfolios, but there would be some portfolios that had a few odd ones that weren't in other, other uh, portfolios. The gold stocks were showing some strength. That's not what we wanted.
Okay, uh, there's that stutter step on SA. Little gap up from a bullish engulfing, consolidation, and notice why it's consolidating or why we can say it's consolidating. Doji, doji, spinning top, doji, morning star signal. Where do you think, when they came up through the 50 and they supported back near the 50, where do you think your next target is? Probably right up here at the same place it peaked out before. Um, are all the stocks you were reviewing here tonight based upon subscriber? Uh, no, these are ones that I've pulled up the charts to either illustrate signals or patterns or ones that I think uh, look good for uh, uh, tomorrow. There's that stutter step again that com came up through the uh, the uh, 50, morning star right on the 50. Where do you think our next target is? Probably up here testing this area and probably possibly filling this gap. So that's a uh, a good-looking chart. Yeah, when I, uh, Harvey, when I tell people, uh, or when I say, Jim, do the double line, that's when you type in your, re your requests. Um, and on nights like this, we try to want to keep your request to two, one or two. Uh, oh, and let's see if I did this one. We had one today. Remember, uh, Oh, VJet was also a good-looking chart until late in the day. So this was a case where it had a, a, a J-hook pattern setting up, was trading positive, but the fact that it closed back here now puts you in a position where you close out the position if it opens lower because the J-hook trajectory is gone. It tells you you might be moving sideways for a while. And uh, oh, okay. Uh, am I looking at the right one? That's not a belt. Oh, here's the belt hold. Belt hold down here is the example. Pulled back a little bit. But that was kind of the start, and SSP, whoops, there was another belt hold. A belt hold is when they gap it way down below the trading range and bring it back up into the trading range, which is different than a piercing signal where they close it more than halfway up the previous candle. The bigger they gap this down and bring it back up, the stronger that belt hold uh, is going to be, meaning they've wiped out a lot of the sellers, um, which means your uptrend now doesn't have very many sellers in the way. It makes the uptrend very strong. Another J-hook pattern that worked well today, uh, TXMD. So the medical stocks and the uh, bios are still acting strong. You can, you can sit with this. Now, somebody was asking about RG. Are, they said, well, I've seen a hanging man and a doji. Doesn't, aren't they sell signals? They are if they confirm. In either case, had this opened lower, let's make this big enough where we can see what we're talking about. Had this opened lower, yeah, you start taking some profits because it's hanging man doji is probably coming back down to the T-line. But they gapped it up the next day and did a shooting star type doji which told us if it opened lower the next day, you want to take profits. They opened it higher. We did a doji uh, spinning top today. Tells us if they open this lower tomorrow, you probably want to take profits. But as of right now, they keep moving it up. Even though it's indecisive, they've just are still not doing anything to the uh, trajectory of the uh, stochastics. We're still in, a, in an uptrend. Somewhat along the same lines as our recommendation on Gale, right in here, we recommended it, did a doji, did a doji, did a doji, but notice what they didn't do. They weren't selling it off, and they were staying above the three T-line, as well as the T-line, coming out of a fry pan bottom. So you, you want to use that information to tell you this is still a strong trend. Uh, RGRG, is it still viable? No. It was, uh, well, maybe, let's see. Shouldn't say that so quickly.
it's still uh, buyable. Because if we took a... Uh, we went through the uptrend because we can see the uh, bottom of the trend channel is almost equivalent. More than likely, they could be taking it back up toward this level. So, yes, you can still be buying, just be a little bit more nimble at these levels. Oh, and OPK also giving us a high probability setup because, as you can see, they did the slow curve or a fry pan bottom right here on the uh, 50 day moving average. So it tells us we want to uh, still be up in, uh, or still looking for this to move up to the 50. Uh, DDD and Facebook, yes. Facebook, which was going to be one of the first ones I looked at as far as going short, is you got the possibility of going short on this on weakness because you've got a bearish engulfing signal and a close back below the T line. And where did it do these sell signals? Right where it did sell signals before. So if this was going to back off, where do you think it was going to back off to? Probably right now back to the 50 day moving average. Uh, and there's other ones that we were long, but we went, closed out the positions. Camp was closed out, but notice what it's done. An evening star signal and a close back below the T line makes the uh, 50 a possible uh, target at this point. Now, Bitter, another one that we were uh, making good money with, but it's done a long-legged spinning top, bullish engulfing. If this starts trading lower, it's probably coming back down toward the 50. Um, and the ZLTQ, with that big, huge, that's a bearish belt hold. Notice they gapped it up and brought it back down into the trading range. In this case, it was a bearish belt hold uh, dark cloud because they closed it more than halfway down this candle. Makes this very simple. If they open this lower tomorrow, you want to start shorting it. On something like this, that tells you they took all the fizzle out of this. Usually that leads to a very long, steady downtrend. Um, and LIN, we were long this one for a while, but then it started rolling over, and now kind of a doji sandwich. This looked more like a doji over on the other services. But close below the uh, 50, if this opens weaker tomorrow, you can be shorting it with the possibility it could come all the way down to the 200. NES, same scenario. Notice the slow curve. Remember, a slow curve on the positive side gives you a slingshot effect to the upside. A slow curve to the negative side gives you that. And notice what we did today, doji sandwich. And where did it close? Below the support level. That tells you they could just be pulling the plug on this one and uh, uh, really knocking it down hard. Uh, and a lot of the uh, solars kind of gave up. Uh, whoops. TSL, bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing. This might be now a you know, sideways trend channel heading down into this area especially if it doesn't support at the 50. And JKS, we were making some very good money on uh, this trade with it breaking out. But now, again, bearish engulfing, left-right combo, close below the T-line, would suspect at least coming back to the 50. And HIMX. Now, somebody was asking if they give you a sell signal, is it time to go short? Not necessarily, because a lot of times they'll give a, the uptrend will continue just after some sell-off. But here's a case where we started seeing a lot of sell signals. We took profits in HM or HIMX and definitely was out of it on a close below the T-line. Now it's confirming. So this makes for a very viable short down here back to the 50-day moving average. 
and M-T-O-R, Bullish Harami, little hanging man, little hanging man, closed below the T-line. Where is it potentially able to come to? Right back here. Why? Extra support level, and there's a gap right here that it could come back down and fill. The more pieces of evidence that we can for identifying a target when a trend is starting, the higher the probability that trade has got everybody else watching for that type of uh, uh, trade setup or trade targeting. This one is one of those where you got the booster. They took it up and then reversed it. This one uh, has probably got high probabilities of coming back down toward the 200-day moving average because it's got that booster move where it kind of pushed it down that much harder after they were buying it today. And TiVo, TiVo kicker signal to the downside, likely target back down to the 200. A couple more, just uh, there's... This, and a few days ago, we started uh, we, we, um, we started to look at the short positions just to have them on because a lot of people will ask, how much, what percentage of your money do you have invested in the market at any one time? And I'm using 100%. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% long or 100% short, but if I've got 10 positions on and I've got eight longs and two shorts, uh, that's not unusual. Um, uh, is there less value on these one-day bear candle signals because of today's overall sell-off? Uh, let's see. Is there less? There's less value based on what has happened in the past. In this case. Big sell off, move up, big sell off, move up, big sell off, move up. So still need to see whether this was just that this is the nature of the market right now. Um, can all these stocks be shorted? Oh, Harvey, probably. I don't know whether can they, I mean, are they, is it ones that we want to be shorting? Yeah, these you can be shorting. Can they be shorted? Well, sometimes when you call up your brokerage firm and say, I want to short this one, they may not have stock available for you to short. Uh, S-U-N-E, another one that's probably coming back down to test the T-line. And uh, Weight Watchers, well, if that ain't a fine, how to do Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Weight Watchers has a good short, even though it's moved sideways. Notice what's happened when it moves sideways right to the 50-day moving average, a bearish engulfing signal. What's that tell us? tells us if this is wave one, this is wave two, wave three could be down here, the same magnitude as this move right here. So I wouldn't be afraid to be shorting this on weakness tomorrow with the idea that it could come down into this range which would be this range, plus you kind of drew a line down through the bottoms here, somewhere down in this area is where you'd find support. Uh, do you evaluate specific sectors, or do you scan for signals of the overall stock market qualified by your filters for daily trade volume, et cetera? Sue, mostly by the... Uh, 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 by the uh, daily signals on individual stocks. Now, what will usually happen is if all of a sudden you see some tremendous, three or four tremendous buy signals on trucking stocks, you can pretty well assume the trucking industry is being bought by somebody. But if you get a day where you can't find a whole heck of a lot that's showing you anything good, then you can go back and scan for the sectors. Which sectors did the best today? And then once you find those sectors, you just scan for the stocks in those sectors that did the best. Is your transition from bullish to bearish in a single day event or multiple? Usually in multiple days. Um, the higher we get up and show that they're starting to show some weakness, the more likely I'm going to be, I may be, have gone from 
nine longs and one short, or even ten longs, to where I took some profits on the longs and then added a short or two. And then a few days later, took some more profits on longs and then added another short or two. Then when the market does roll over, it's not like I'm selling ten longs and buying ten shorts. I might be taking off uh, two more uh, long positions and adding two more shorts, and now I'm six long and four. I'm sorry, four long and six short. So it's it's kind of a, a self uh, cultivating process. Um, before today, what percentage of your portfolio was short? Uh, I only had a few short positions on, and I don't even know what they were right now. Uh, oh, one was I was short Go Go, and Go Go traded up today. So. Um, but see the bearish engulfing signal. So we, I was short this, and it didn't do me any good. Um, well, the uh, yeah, uh, I'm getting with uh, Becky tonight to go over. We will probably be doing the uh, a webinar on the scans. Now we did a short one a few about a week ago, but we'll be doing a uh, Saturday morning. Uh, uh, scanning, and that's going to show you how you set up your scans. And then on top of that, not only setting up the scans, but evaluating kind of using the quantified positions, which ones do we cultivate down to to be our best positions for the next day. So that's usually about a two-and-a-half-hour session. Uh, that will be free for members on a, a Saturday morning. Do you short by buying stock puts or Option puts. Do you short by buying? Uh, either way, Brad, I either short the stock or buy puts. Uh, we don't know which Saturday yet. We're, um, Becky and I are going to get together tomorrow. Probably will be probably in about two weeks. I think two weeks. Well, oh, yeah, probably about two weeks. It probably won't be this weekend, but maybe the next weekend. Uh, okay, let's see if I've missed anything. Uh, what software platform do you use for scanning class? Uh, I'll probably be do, using a combination this time of Metastock as well as uh, 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 TCNet. But the reason I use TCNet is because I know the formulas for that, and the formulas can be applied to any uh, software uh, scanning software. So I think Ed C in the uh, members chat room has all the formulas for uh, applying them to think or swim. Um, and uh, oh, I think Trade Station already has a lot of our formulas on there. Uh, yeah, all the webinars are recorded. Any advantage for placing trades with live broker versus doing it? Uh, usually not, Leo. Usually on electronic, you're going to you see it much quicker. Is Metastock better than TC2000? Not necessarily. Uh, they're both good. Um, right now, we've just put all the formulas on Metastock for the quantity quantitative or the quantified uh, signals so that uh, I think we had 18 showing you the formulas for doing your finding your best friend the doji gap up or the left right combo or your right pin bottom breakout uh, Uh, the spy had a doji gap up I don't know whether I can get the spy over here on this Uh, the spy is showing the same thing. Um, the S&P 500 showing that uh, you, know, you had hanging man signals that stayed above the T line, but now they broke broke down. Let's see, disadvantage in oh so many ways. Open the account wheel. Okay. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, yes, Ed is great at uh, writing formulas. 
Um, and again, this is why the uh, Candlestick Forum has the advantage of you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. There's somebody out there uh, that has information. And once you have information and put it out there, somebody may come along and tweak it even better. So it's always a constant uh, uh, building on each other's information. Okay, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. All right, Jim, you better do the next double line. Just so we can stop the scrolling. All right, I'll try to... Try to do this before everybody. Oops. Bank of America. This one, if it opens weaker tomorrow, you have to close out the position. It's probably coming back at least to the bottom of the trend channel. Oops. Now you've already scrolled past me. I'm going to do this. HZNP. Uh, this one stayed above the T-line. This is a very important factor. When you see something stay above the T-line, that's giving you a good indication you're still in an uptrend. I would stay with this, but if this opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position. Because it should be telling us the bulls are still in control uh, with this type of signal today. ISRG, this is a perfect example of if you see something move, and it hits a potential target, flip to your 10-minute chart. The worst-case scenario is it starts backing off from this. You close out your position. You can always buy it back if they show it's going to come through. But the probabilities are if they've stretched up to a resistance level, where do you think everybody's taking profits when it gets to that resistance level? DEPO, uh, bearish engulfing. This one needs to stay above the T-line. LNDC. Uh, this one you stay short until you see a buy signal. And ZQ, where'd the Q go? There it is. This one you stay short until you see a buy signal. Would anticipate the 200 day moving average being the uh, potential target. PAL. Uh, PLL, uh, boy. That's whipsawly, obviously. This one, I wouldn't be in until it trades back up above the T-line. And PZG. Oh, mercy. That's one's not coming up. Let's try something else. GTI. Oh, dang this. Thing. All right, we're going to do this. Hold on for a second. We're going to. Let's see if anything. Now, well, even my mouse is acting up. All right. Um, just. All right. Hold on for a second. Now, why is my mouse acting up? It's because the mouse pad is dirty, and it shouldn't be. There's beautiful candlestick signals all over it. Well, something's going on here. All right, hold on. I'm
All right. Let's see. BLDP. A left right combo. If this opens lower tomorrow, close out the position. They're coming back to the T line. GTI. Did an inverted hammer signal today. Coming out of this slow curve makes this very simple. If this opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying immediately. That tells you the profit taking today is over. And ONVO, this one makes it very simple. If it opens, it's going to move in the direction of how they open. If this opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position. GL or RGLS, another inverted hammer after a doji gap up. Stochastics right at the oversold area. If this opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately. Seco, get ready to close this one out on a left-right combo if it opens weaker tomorrow. That's not what I want to do. Fran, this is another example. When you have a big price move like this, if it opens lower the next day, you take your profits. And then put your buy stop up where it, uh, uh, where it opened previous day. Um, let's see, MHR. Uh, this one getting soggy. Uh, this one, all you can do is hold as long as it doesn't close below the T line. And T A N. Nah. T A N. A left right combo. If this opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position. LinkedIn. LinkedIn stays short on this one. Uh, you can go short if it opens lower tomorrow because you can see you're still in this downtrend and they can't get up through the uh, resistance level. AU, uh, you can be buying this one on positive trading. The golds are starting to uh, pick up some steam. And trip, trip, uh, another one that if it uh, opens lower tomorrow, you close it out for two reasons. Uh, the magnitude of move on this one isn't very great right now. You're in a sideways mode. You really need something to show you that you're in a trend, and there's nothing there. We did ONVO, CLF. CLF, stay short. It's probably heading for the 200-day moving average. And NIHD. This one did a doji uh, gap up. This one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Kind of a little scoop pattern, but that doji gap up, double bottom type uh, setup, that's that's uh, what you want to be going after. Those are good looking charts. Ah. What the heck do I keep hitting that brings this stuff up? Well, 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 well. SSNI. Um, another one that I wouldn't be too, uh, well, I guess there is some good percentage in there. But uh, this one, if it opens lower tomorrow, you definitely want to be out of it. It has to stay above the T-line. And CDW. You had that big shooting star today. It makes this very simple. It better open positive. If it, even if it opens positive, you set your stop at today's low. If it comes down through there. It's coming back to the T line. If it opens lower, you close it out immediately. And UNG. UNG uh, also gapping up off the. Uh, off the 50, you can be buying this one. Uh, S 
B G L. Uh, this one has to open positive and get through the 50 to, to get into it. Uh, it's not a great chart, but you can be buying this one. Uh, DYAX we did. Uh, this one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. U.S. Steel, stay short until you see a buy signal and it'll close back up above the T-line. MSTX, uh, this one, if it opens lower, you take your profits, and then you put your buy stop at where it closed. And PH, or PPHM, there's your J-hook pattern doing exactly what it was expected to do. Um, after you saw that the profit taking was over. CTIC, another one where you just stay long until you see a sell signal confirmed. Did we get to GTI? GTI, you buy on positive trading tomorrow. Silver, uh, back up above the uh, 50. You can buy this one on positive trading using the 50 as your stop. AUY, another one that uh, you can be buying off of this fry pan bottom. GDX, same scenario, gold, uh, stay positive off this little kicker signal. And CYTR, even though it backed off today, it didn't uh, close back below the T-line, but if it opens lower tomorrow, you probably close it out and then see what it does once it gets to the T-line. CROX. This one should have been closed out today with, the, with, with it closing below the T-line. Uh, for two reasons, because now it's closed back below the halfway point of this candle and below the T-line. So just to, you can always buy this one back if it comes back up above the uh, T-line on a buy signal. Tesla looks like it's probably coming back to the 200-day moving average. There's your, left, or your bearish engulfing, closed below the T-line. I would suspect it's coming back to the 200. First solar. Also looking like it's coming back down. When they've failed here, that's a blue ice failure. They're going to the 50-day moving, I'm sorry, the 200-day moving average. And NSU. Stay long until you see a sell signal. GLD, we did that one. Stay long. Sohu, uh, another one that you can short if it opens weaker tomorrow. Your first support level would be the bottom of this trend channel as it brings you right down into this area. And A. FSI, failure at the 50. Notice all the indecisive trading. When somebody says, where can this go, say, watch what it does once it gets to the first resistance level, and that's what we watch for is what type of signals do we have here. Now you've had a doji gap down back below the T-line. That tells me where wave one, wave two, wave three should be the same magnitude as this move right here. EXR didn't do anything that told us there was any uh, change of investor sentiment. Stochastic still heading up. You stay long on this one. GILD, left-right combo, uh, kind of re at a resistance level here. I wouldn't be trading this long or short. You're caught in a wedge right now. Um, I'd be trading something else. And let's see, did we do... C-Y-T-R, yes, this one uh, didn't do anything to change investor sentiment. Santa, Santa getting iffy. If it opens lower, it's coming back to the T-line. 
but you stay long as long as it stays above the T line. And Mac, another one where you stay long as long as it stays above the T line. So this one has to open positive tomorrow to stay in it. Netflix, Netflix did a little inverted hammer in the oversold area. Very simple. If it opens lower, you stay short. If it opens positive, probably you want to close out your position and possibly even go long, but I'd wait for it to come back up above the T line. XVI broke out through this level, gapped up. Now you got a bearish harami. I'd used the low of today and this level as a stop. If it comes down through there, they're bringing it back down to the uh, uh, to the T line. And let me see, let me see, DNDN. Very simple, after the morning star signal, gap up. If it opens positive, you can be buying and you'll be in a J-hook pattern. If it opens lower, they're bringing it back down to test the T-line. And CLTN. Oh, Tyler, that might be a lap. CLNT. This one uh, should have been closed out today with it closing below the T-line. You can always buy it back when it comes back up. Now, when I say you can always buy it back, it might turn around tomorrow and come right back up. Or it might sag here for another three weeks. You want to be out of it as long as it's not back up above the T-line. Apple, stay short until you see a buy signal, which it still hasn't had. Uh, yes, they are honorary members, in my heart, anyways. ENT, uh, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, they're going to be doing some more work, whether they know it or not. Um, we will be setting up, uh, we're, the details are all in place. We're just trying to get them all put together for the long-term pick area. Oh, and speaking, I meant to get to more people before. Remember, we're going to be changing the password at uh, late tonight. So you check the members area uh, for the password. Let's see. What am I looking at? ENT. ENT's got a good-looking chart. Uh, J-hook pattern. And EDAP. EDAP, uh, this one, if it opens lower, you close out the position. That's going to be kind of a killer. Even though it's not a sell signal, it's uh, telling you that the, the bears are knocking it down for a while. Um, JJ's, they've got it now. I uh, did some editing of it last night. They should be out pretty soon. Let's see. No discussion. Uh, okay, we're already voting. Um, we did PA all right. Yeah, it uh, wouldn't do anything with this until it does get back up above the T line. Why are you using stochastics with MACD and th 3EMA? I don't know where the. Th oh, I don't know why this is on here. That's a mistake. But the MACD is only there. I don't use it. It's just adding added a little fluffy, uh, and it can go on there without in interrupting anything. So I just have it there just to. Uh, just like to see it when it crosses. If he's, is, yeah, I don't use it at all. It's a lagging indicator. Okay, it's it. We got most of it. Uh, oh, PPHM. 
stay long on this one, Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company, as you can see, had a tough time getting up through the uh, 50. Um, and it almost did a uh, island reversal, but it kind of negated that. If you're going to buy this, now you wait for it to come back up through the 50. Let's see. ACR. W. Whoops. ACRW is not coming up. Uh, and a ah, let's see, AGNC. This one you can be buying. And they pay a good dividend yield. That's a that's a good looking chart. Done, did a double bottom. Let's see, we did ONVO, right? ONVO needs to open positive tomorrow to stay in it. Uh, the password for in here will be changing for the members. TXTR, this one, uh, if you're in it, you want to be out of it. Obviously, you're moving flat, which means you're probably moving flat until you get to the uh, the 50-day moving average. And CCXI, another one that has to open positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, you close out the position because that's going to be breaking the trajectory of this fry pan bottom. Uh, Don, I was uh, I closed out a lot of long positions. I didn't add any short positions, only because I went to uh, get more corn for the darn deer. And when I came back, the uh, market would sold off, so I was just selling and I wasn't shorting. Now tomorrow, I'll be looking to see whether they open a positive or negative to decide whether I'm adding short positions or uh, uh, swinging back into new long positions. Q, uh, uh, QUIK, you should be out. Well, let's say you should be out of this one. Yes, you should be out of this one. It's close enough to the T line to say it better open positive tomorrow to stay in it. ACRX. All right, this one, all you can do is stay long until you see a sell signal and a close. Now, you've got the bearish Harami. So it better trade above the T-line tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Any personal opinion on cause, direction for the rest of the week? Uh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm going to be looking for two factors. One, whoops. Let me... What do we do with the NASDAQ? The NASDAQ has given us this big down day, big down day, big down day, big down day. Now we need to see what it does the next day, like it's done before, to see whether they're definitely taking this back down to the 50, which means there's going to be two or three uh, hard selling days, or whether they're going to do indecisive trading and maintain the uptrend. Okay, one more, uh, let's see, a couple more. Potash, bah, my fat fingers hit the wrong. Potash, this is one that uh, if it opens lower, you probably want to be out because it's telling us the top of the tre trend channel is kind of acting as resistance. Lulu, stay short. Or you could go short on this one with that kicker signal to the downside. Sears holding, same thing. Stay short because you're in the oversold area. You did have the uh, bearish engulfing. This is where it should have been shorted. And Twitter. Twitter, you stay short until you see a sell signal or a buy signal and a close above the T-line. Merck, 
Merck, nice gap up today. What this is going to do is move up a little bit more, get into this trajectory, and then go 45 degree from there. Okay. Uh, tighten stops. Yes, I'd uh, be tightening stops. If any weakness tomorrow, I'd be closing out more long positions. Scotty was closed out today because it traded back below the T-lines. And did we do C-O-N-T? C-O-N-T, same scenario. Closed below the T-line, it was closed out. Is there any promo for New Year for this room? Uh, Abdu, I think they already have done the promos. So we had a, a, you know, a the, uh, uh, so I don't know whether, what promos. We will be doing uh, a bunch of uh, uh, free trainings here over the next few weeks because it's going to be cold and rain, wintry outside. All right. Okay, let's call it a night. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow. Let's see. One last one, which is Cree. Cree. Want to go short on weakness tomorrow. There's your gap down. Uh, uh, now, this gap down before the market uh, started tanking. The market was holding up pretty well this morning. So you want to be going short on, on this one. Oh, let's see. My mouse, I don't know what's, uh, see, I forget which mouse. This is a wireless mouse. Let's see. I don't see any lights on it. So it seems to be working. Okay. Do you watch or place any weight on the trend? No. Uh, all right. We'll see everybody in the chat rooms tomorrow. I'm going to go get another drink of something. <laughs>